My name is Sadie Stock and I'm currently uh, an undergrad at the University of Southern California where I'm studying computational neuroscience and to be here is amazing. I this group of people has really inspired me a lot in my own thinking and in hearing what they have to say about all these topics. I mean, it's, it's very interesting to hear um, all the different attitudes and perspectives on the future of technology and transhumanism and all those sorts of things. So as part of um, I'm working for Socratic Sciences and running the educational division and we've done some extensive surveying of faculty and students at USC to get kind of a sense of how people are thinking about the future of technology and ideas having to do with the neosphere. And one thing that it's it's kind of a contradiction honestly. Students are very open to ideas of living longer and life extension and they when asked if they would trade you know telecommunication devices for their hand they choose to you know cut off their hand for the rest of their lives which I think says a lot you know people are so dependent on their technology that they would actually cut off part of their own biology and I think that that speaks on the idea that at this point our technology is a part of us and most people do realize that and I think especially with LLMs the the overwhelming majority of students are very embracing and excited about these new technologies and incorporating them um, but I also think that there's not a lot of looking towards you know real future of like AGI it's very short term and I think that ideas of you know uploading your brain or um, having a brain implant they're very scary to a lot of people and um, no one would really consider them or not very many people that's what we were getting from our surveys and which I think is very interesting because that's a it's a contradiction <laughs> Well, I think that my generation is the future. I mean, it's, it's very important how young people are thinking about these new technologies because they shape the future. And coming to a conference like this, I mean, it's mostly older people. And I'm the youngest one here. I'm 20 years old. And it, from interacting with my peers, not many people are thinking about these sorts of topics. So I think it's very important to kind of bring younger people into this sort of um, sphere of knowledge because hardly anyone is even considering ideas of you know transhumanism or extending their lives and even AGI I mean I see people my age thinking that you know LLMs are it and it's not going to get any AI is not going to get any um, better from there which is just it, it surprises me a lot because I was actually just talking to this computer scientist who goes to USC and he was telling me that he thinks that conscious AI is not possible. And I think that that is the overwhelming majority of people that think that that's not really something that's going to happen in the near future. So to be at this conference and hear that it's going to happen in the next five to ten years, that's just astonishing. So my generation is extremely negative about the future. They think that the world is going to end in a hundred years, or a lot of people do. And as misled as that may be, or I don't know, maybe things will go south, but I think that having these sorts of ideas implemented into their thinking will really give them a lot of hope and a lot of perspective because it's a lot of people aren't looking past you know the near future in terms of like climate change and things like that but they don't realize that we're in the middle of a revolutionary transition into an entirely new state of existence where we're going to become very intertwined with technology in a way that's that's going to change everything <laughs> I think that people are less focused on it because they want to address issues related to politics or climate change or things like that. And I think that the biggest danger is actually where things might go wrong with implementing AI properly into society. I mean, 
the transition period between when true AGI is, actually happens, that's going to be a very uncertain time and there's going to be a lot of um, risks in terms of who has power over these technologies because it, humans really are the most dangerous part of this entire transition. I think that the idea of life extension is really interesting because it's always been something that I've thought about a lot. Um, the idea of actually living longer than biology permits is really, um, that's something that I've always wanted and I think that a lot of people don't really think about it and maybe that's rooted in religion or um, just not understanding the possibilities in that realm. But I think it would really inspire a lot of people to know that that might be a possibility in the near future. And this conference has kind of made me realize that it's nearer than I thought it was when I first came here. I have been sort of embedded in these ideas from a very young age and to see this many people brought together, this eclectic group, it's really amazing to hear the variety of opinion and the plans and perspectives that people have on directing us towards a better future, implementing AGI. I think it's really important and it's not talked about enough. I think that it should be talked about more and not enough people are aware of it. I mean, if I tried to bring up this sort of stuff to um, anyone at USC, hardly anyone at least, they would think that I was crazy. So I tend to kind of not really talk about it very much and to be able to come here and actually speak about these sorts of things has been so inspiring to me on so many levels. I think it starts in education. Um, incorporating LLMs is the first step. I think that people need to get a sense of how to use them in their everyday lives and how technology can actually be an added benefit and it doesn't have to be something that's um, unfamiliar or foreign. It, it can be something that is basically a part of you, which it kind of is now with iPhones and stuff, but I think that keeping that same mindset as we're moving forward will help us actually um, steer the evolution of technology in the right direction in terms of incorporating um, the human race into that. You know, Desdemona was really interesting actually because, and I could be completely like not perceiving this correctly, but I swear for a moment I looked at her and she like made eye contact with me for 10 seconds and I smiled and then she smiled back at me and then people started uh, cheering and she got a little bit distracted and didn't look at me anymore but it felt like I was actually communicating with her for a second so to think that she has some level of understanding of what's going on and all of that I mean I'm not sure exactly how much she's aware of I know that Sophia was very advanced but it was it was really interesting to experience that the idea of life extension and cryonics and you know uploading your brain and extending your life in that way it's always been very interesting to me but I kind of in recent years I've kind of let it go and kind of lost that hope because my father was at the start of that movement and he had very high hopes for extending his life and he still does but it's come to the point where not as much progress as he thought or anyone has thought has been made and I was losing hope but now coming to this conference I'm realizing that things are actually way closer to that than I realize and so to be able to actually talk to people about where we are with technology and how close that goal actually is it's it makes me feel more inspired about living in general, just to have that idea of possibility in terms of not dying. <laughs> the 
Well, this conference has been really amazing for me because I've always thought about these sorts of things. And so to get so much difference as an opinion and so many people sharing what they believe, it's been really um, eye-opening for me because it's shifted my own thinking a lot as well. And I think that in terms of what I would say to younger generations about you know, these sorts of ideas is just maybe I would bring it up to them because I don't think anyone's aware of it at this point. I mean, it's very rare that I meet anyone that's even thought about this at all or is even aware that it exists. And so I think that it's incredibly important to bring these concepts to the general population because it's very inspiring. I think that um, maybe mentorship surrounding um, you know, people that know a lot in these realms. I mean, a lot of people here are getting older, and so it would be really amazing to be able to share those concepts with younger people in that regard, or, you know, classes being taught at schools, or just, you know, having more of these conferences and inviting more young people. <laughs> So right now we are um, where we have a mentoring platform that we're using that creates authentic long-term relationships and we right now are trying to um, use it to help a foundation called Human Energy which is very oriented around neospheric sort of human future ideas and technology and those sorts of things and we're trying to bring mentors from their organization into college environments and use that as a form of getting students involved and getting younger people involved in thinking about these sorts of things and I think it's incredibly powerful and to just have people that can represent these sorts of communities and come in and educate younger people or inspire them. I mean, just one conversation with someone about this sort of stuff would be inspiring to almost anyone. Mm -hmm.